warning. For viewers sensitive to issues of race, be advised that the following piece contains gratuitous use of the N-word. And by N-word, I mean nigger. There, I said it. For the last 15 years, a man named Clayton Bigsby has been the leading voice of the white supremacist movement in America. Though not sold in any major bookstores, his books Dump Truck, Nigger Stain, I Smell Nigger, and Nigger Book have sold over 600,000 copies combined. Despite his popularity, very few have ever seen him due to his reclusiveness, but in an effort to bring his message to a wider audience, he agreed to give his first public interview ever to Frontline. But getting to Mr. Bigsby was an odyssey in itself, riddled with backcountry hollers, shifty go-betweens, and palpable danger. Uh, excuse me, not sure we're in the right place. We're looking for Clayton Bigsby. Well, look no further, fella, you found me. Uh, Clayton Bigsby, the author? What, you don't think I can write them books? Just because I'm blind don't mean I'm dumb. How could this have happened? A black white supremacist. Our search for answers led us here to the Wexler Home for the Blind, where Mr. Bigsby spent the first 19 years of his life. Bridget Wexler is the home's headmistress. Well, he was the only Negro we'd ever had around here. So we figured we'd make it easier on Clayton by just telling him and all the other blind kids that he was white. And he never questioned it. Why would he? You've written four books now. I've written six books. They published four. What would you say is the overall message of your books? Sir, my message is simple. Naggers, Jews, homosexuals, Mexicans, Arabs, and all kinds of different chanks stink, and I hate it. I noticed you referred to uh, African Americans. Mm -hmm. What exactly is your problem? How much time you got, buddy? Where would I start? Well, first of all, they're lazy, good-for-nothing tricksters, crack-smoking swindlers, big butt-having, wide nose breathing all the white man's air. They eat up all the chicken. They think they're the best dancers. And they stink. Did I mention that before? Yes, I believe you did, sir. Matter of fact, my friend Jasper told me one of them coons came by his house to pick his sister up for a date. He said, look here, nigger. That there's my girl. Anyone has sex with my sister, it's gonna be me. <laughs> never left this property, have you, Mr. Bigsby? No, sir, not in many years. What if I were to tell you that you are an African-American? Sir, listen, I'm gonna make this clear. I'm in no way, shape, or form involved in any negrodom. You understand? Yes, sir, but... Uh, but, but nothing. Mr. Now, B if you'll excuse me, I have a book signing to go to. Why don't you bring your media cameras over there if you want to see some real truth? Prudence! Prudence, have Jasper load the truck! And Clayton Bixby, black white supremacist, ventured out into an unsuspecting world. Sir, you're a friend. Why not tell him he's African American? Listen, man, it's too important to the movement. Well, tell him he's black, you'd probably kill yourself. Just to be one less nigger around. His commitment is that deep. I'm overwhelmed by the irony. Hey, thank you, boy. Uh oh. Lost boy? Come on, come on. boy. We don't like your kind around here. You better get out of here before some bad happens. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Tell that nigger. Be a dirty nigger. Come on, Clay. We, 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 gotta, we gotta go. Oh, thanks. There's a nigger around here. That dirty monkey was beating my hood. Confusion did not end there. Hey, why don't you jungle buddy turn that music down? Negros make 
Hey, sack! Look at Boogie, nigger! Look at Boogie! Did he just call us niggers? Awesome! The anticipation was at a fever pitch as we arrived at Mr. Bigsby's book signing. This is the man who should be the next president of the United States. Yes. All right, Jay, it's for time to show these people what white power is all about. You better put your hood on, Clayton. All right. Might want to might wanna hide your identity to be safer, you know, in case some radical ain't sympathetic to the cause wants to shoot you. Yeah, it's good thinking. All right. <clears throat> Here, let me get that. Who made us proud to be white? Oh, yeah. None other than Clayton Bigsby. Yeah. was a target as well. Let's talk about Chinese people with their kung fu and all that silly chang chang chong talk. I can't understand you. Go back to your country, white power. Mr. Big B was also critical of the entertainment industry. Don't let the liberal media tell you how to think and feel. If you have hate in your heart, let it out. If you don't like Will and Grace, that don't mean there's something wrong with you. It means there's something wrong with Will. He's homosexual. Politicians weren't spared either. White power. Colin Powell. Conalangus rice. Conalangus rice sounds like a Mexican dish. Maybe we should put her on a plate and send her to Mexico so the Mexicans will eat her. White power. <laughs> Just open up your heart and let that hate out. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your face. We want to see your face. Yeah. Who said that? You want to see my face? Clayton, go on, brother. Do you want to see my face? Don't be afraid, Jasper. We're talking about this. Don't be afraid. There is cookie and punch for us to enjoy, and we can meet, talk about white brotherhood. Thank you all for coming. White power! Mr. Bigsby was not harmed that night, but irreparable damage has been done to his reputation, and in many ways, the white power movement. We're told that in the last few weeks, he has accepted the fact that he is a black man. And three days ago, he filed for divorce from his wife. When we asked why, after 19 years of marriage, he responded, because she's a nigger lover. <laughs> I'm Kent Wallace. Good night. Funding for Frontline provided by the Trent Plot Foundation for Peace and Understanding. Loving black people, one at a time.